my friend's been acting real strange. She's just not herself. She's completely stopped going to classes and she's just not herself. The other day I went to see her and I was, I was surprised by what I saw. She hasn't left her room in days. She's been my best friend for years and I asked her what was wrong and she said that she wasn't happy but that she didn't have any reason to be. The most frustrating thing is I want to help but I can't because I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what's wrong. Depression, one of the most common psychological disorders, consists of unique subtypes. In the subtype major depressive disorder, for example, a person suffers from moderate to severe symptoms that last at least two weeks. In contrast, a person who is suffering from the subtype dysthymic disorder typically suffers milder symptoms, which last for two years or longer. The typical symptoms of dysthymic disorder include low self-esteem, pessimism, social withdrawal, chronic tiredness, guilt, and diminished productivity. In this interview, Roberto describes his experience of living with dysthymic disorder for more than seven years. As you listen to him, note his feelings of hopelessness, his overriding sense of guilt, and his belief that he lacks control over the events in his life. You see no light at the end of the tunnel. All you see is, is the tunnel and you, and you don't know which is the beginning and which is the end. You're just there. It's just, you, you deal with what's dealt to you. You don't feel like you're in control. You feel that these are external factors and you have no say in them. You, you're, you're, you're not, you think, you think there is control in your life and you know there is no control. You are a cog in a wheel and, you know, it's, it's a bit depression. You feel very small, you feel very insignificant. You know, you, you don't think your problems are worth the time of other people to think that they are problems. You know, you, you, you devalue everything in your life. It becomes less and less than what it, what it should be for yourself, what, what potential you have. You devalue yourself. No one else is doing it to you. You do it to yourself. You just... You break yourself down, you, you make yourself into the hideous monster that, you know, you never thought you could be. Basically, I'm ashamed of myself, I'm ashamed of my body, I'm ashamed of how I feel about perceptions about women or about other people. I don't love myself, I don't give myself the pat on the back that I need. In the next sequence, Roberto describes his day-to-day -day routine. Roberto's dysthymic disorder has led to social isolation and caused him to narrow his personal goals and experiences. It has also led to dysfunctional sleeping and eating patterns that are typical of this disorder. Stay up late at night, one or two in the morning, watch TV, maybe smoke a few cigarettes, fall asleep, wake up. Um, if I have to go to work, I don't, I'm not able to get to work on time. I fall asleep again, I turn on the alarm, turn it off, fall asleep, wake up again, and then go to work. Uh, try to do as best as I can at work, come out, maybe visit a friend. If I don't work, stay home, isolate, um, fantasize, not lift a finger, eat uh, as, as a way of nurturing myself and feeling good and which in essence doesn't because I take a look at my body and I don't feel well. Um, pretty routine mud mundane things for me and uh, just limiting myself to that. Just saying this is all that I'm capable of. This is all that I'm going to do for myself just and no more. 
Although Roberto would like to enrich his life, he seems unable to take action on his own behalf. In the following sequence, please note his descriptions of chronic tiredness and diminished productivity. It's hard to break out of cycles that you get into, if it's poverty or family or, you know, whatever it is you're into. It's hard to break out of that. And I think, for me, it's hard for me to get what it takes, or I'm going to need what it takes to get myself out of this. It's not as easy as it seems. You think just picking up and, you know, correcting your environment is simple. It's very, very hard for me to do. I explained that to Social Security hearing today, you know, and it's the truth. I cannot correct my environment. For some reason, I'm immobilized by doing something corrective, positive. For me, it's for me. It's for no one else. You know, it's for me, and I can't do it. I just can't not do it. Not gonna, I don't know why. To torture, it's like a torturing a self, you know, torturing myself, hurting myself. I don't know why. Although the symptoms of dysthymic disorder are not as severe as those seen in major depressive disorder, dysthymic disorder often causes a long-term disability. In the final sequence, please note how this disorder has resulted in profound feelings of despair and guilt. It's evident in my family makeup. My brother has a manic depressive problem he's on SSI and he's not dealing with it effectively with medication and so it's inherent in my genes I look at my father he's an extreme personality when he was alive he tended to go did things in extreme I, f I feel death when I feel here I feel pain and stuff I feel it's just terrible it's I feel ashamed a monster a, a monster in and of itself to to feel unloved to feel un ununderstood, unappreciated, you know, just alone, very alone.